let's be honest, if you are using Zigbee with your Home Assistant, updating the firmware, no matter what kind of a stick you have, can be a really painful task. But it doesn't have to be that way, because there is a workaround for Home Assistant that actually not a lot of you know about. So today we will be looking at, yes, Home Assistant add-on for flashing firmers to your Zigbee sticks. We'll start in a couple of seconds. I started my Home Assistant journey with the Zigbee 2MQTT by using the CC2531 stick. And it worked for some time. And to be honest, I'm actually still using that stick in my summer house. But there is only a couple of devices that are connected to it. That device is no longer recommended. Instead, my main instance is using slash CC2652RB stick. And I've been using it for around 3 or 4 years, I can't remember exactly, but I've been pretty happy with it. Then, about a week ago or 8 days ago, I started having random issues with my Zigbee network. Some of my devices that are also router devices were dropping off the network. They were actually still on the network, but I wasn't able to connect to them and I received logs that they lost the network connectivity, while still visible in the Zigbee 2 MQTT. So what I had to do is either power them off by hand or repair them to add them back. And it would last for about an hour and two, then those same devices would be lost again. And I simply tried whatever I knew and I couldn't figure out what the next step. But we all know that Zigbee network can be sometimes a bit of a problem. Actually, this is the first problem or the first issue I had with my Zigbee network for a long time. At least two or three even more years. There were actually no issues, I didn't have a single device dropping off the network, everything is working ok, responsiveness was ok, but somehow it just started 7 days ago. I did make one change in the settings, I reverted back, but I still had that same issue. So the next step, what I decided to do is of course flash the firmware. And yeah, you all know the process of flashing the firmware. Depending on the stick you are having, you either have to open it, press the button to get into bootloader mode, then you either have to run the Python script, or you have to run the Texas instrument file, or you have to run some other installation tool to push that firmware to your stick. And since you do not do that every day, you forget how you do it. So I had to go back, I found my stick, I clicked on it, I seen the instructions, and it was like, Oh my god, no, not again. Oh, I'm running a Windows PC, so it will not be that easy. And I was just like, there has to be some other way. And actually, there is something that I didn't know existed before today. And it works because I know I was able to flash new firmware to my stick in around 10 minutes. So let's get cracking with today's video. And this is it. Zigstar Home Assistant add-on repository. This is not part of the main Home Assistant community store or main Home Assistant add-on store, whatever. That means that you have to add it to your add-on repositories, but that's no issue. All you have to do is copy this link here in the add-ons, add-on store, click on three dots, repositories, and just paste the URL here. Click add. This is now added to your Home Assistant. Click close. But it still takes a bit of time for this repository to be added here. It's not listed. After some time, the repository will be added. And maybe you've noticed, maybe you didn't. There are actually two programs or two add-ons that you can use. I'm using this one here. It's a Zigstar Texas Instruments CC2652P slash P7 firmware flasher. And the other one is Zigstar Silicon Labs firmware flasher. This one can be used for, for example, Sonoff e-dongle. Not p-dongle, but e-dongle. We will look at it in a couple of minutes. But how do you operate it? Unfortunately, it's still not plug-and-play process. But it's not that hard. Let's look at what you have to do. In my case, for testing purposes, I have added ETAD Sonoff Zigbee 3.0 USB dongle plus. This is the previous version of the Sonoff stick and I like it or prefer it much more than the E version. But if you are using that alternative firmware installer, you can actually also install firmware to the E dongle. The device is recognized. We have to go to settings, 
add-ons, add-on store, click on Zigstar TI CC2652P and click install. While this add-on is getting installed, let's look at supported devices. The best way to look for supported devices is of course on the Zigbee to MQTT page. I'm not saying that ZHA is not good, but actually Zigbee to MQTT has much better documentation than all the other sites I've seen that are covering Zigbee topic. These are USB connected devices and we will be working with those. Although this application or this add-on also works with network plus USB and also network type devices, meaning that devices that are not directly connected to home assistant, instead they have IP address and you connect them via that IP address and the port. These devices are not recommended, but as I said, the other file, the other add-on also supports Silicon Labs EFR32 or similar devices. That means that you can also install the new firmware for following devices. Ok, now the add-on is installed. But please note, if you want to update the firmware, you have to make sure that your Zigbee to MQTT or ZHA are turned off. You have to disable them, shut them down or whatever, because this add-on needs to have unrestricted access to your USB port. Configuration page is used, of course, for configuration. In my case, I will select this device. This is the dongle plus. For the network device, I will not be putting here anything, but I will also receive error. And I will show you what I found out works as a workaround. If you are using USB stick, you have to tick this to on. It says unable to flash USB devices instead of network devices. So if it's USB stick, it needs to be on. If it's network device, it needs to be off. If the stick is son of USB, you also have to tick this box here. Since I'm not using CC1352P, or CC2652P, I will not be ticking any of those boxes here. Instead, we need to use custom firmware URL. And you may ask, where do you get that? You get it, of course, through the Zigbee to MQTT documentation. In my case, I'm using Son of Zigbee 3.0, USB dongle plus, ZB dongle P. I will click on it. And if you click on this link, you will download the firmware. But actually, we don't need firmware, we need a link to the zip file. I will right click, select copy link address, and we will paste this as a custom firmware URL. If you are using network devices and if your device requires it, you can tick this checkbox here to enable bootloader mode for network devices. But we do not need anything more. We have the serial port defined, we are using USB stick, we are using son of USB, and we have here custom firmware URL. Click save, and we received an error. It says failed to save add-on configuration, missing required option network device. I don't know if this is intentional or bug or whatever, but unless you specify network device IP address, this will not work. So the first thing that popped in my mind is, well, let's define it as a local loop. 127001. Click save and it works. Next thing is to go to information page and click start. Let's open log file. And here we should receive information from the terminal. And that's it. The latest firmware is now installed. I really was shocked because actually it works really nice. I do not have to detach the device from my Home Assistant instance. I can just disconnect it from Zigbee to MQTT by shutting the Zigbee to MQTT temporarily down, put the URL for the latest firmware, Click on Start Machine and it will automatically or automatically update the firmware. This here is log for the successful firmware flash. And if we look at this log here, it's not the same, but it may look the same. This is the firmware update for the slash stick. The next question may be, how do you find the URL to your device? There is a link will be down in the video description where you can see all the test devices with warnings, of course. It will tell you what the adapter is, what the TI chip or module used is, what firmware you need, and some other information. So, for example, for my slash stick, I need to download file cc2652rb underscore and then whatever I want to download. For example, coordinator, router, or whatever. For the son of Zigbee USB dongle stick, I have to download cc1352p2 underscore cc2652p launchpad 
underscore then whatever. The list contains all the tested and working firmwares for all the tested and working devices. Some devices may be listed here. For other devices, just look and match the Texas Instruments chipset it is using. Then, after you've selected what you want to do, on the left side you need to select file that you need to download. For example, for my slash stick, I need to use this one here. I would click on RAW with the right mouse button, copy the link and paste it in Home Assistant. For the son of one, I will be using this file here, CC1352P2. Once again on RAW, right click and copy the link address. Any Home Assistant, after you select the device, just paste the URL. As you can see, this one is CC2652RB coordinator. And for the other one, we had router Z stack CC1352 blah 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 for the son of P stick. And that's it. If you did know about this add on, why didn't you tell me? And if you didn't, I really hope that you will be using it. Thank God we do not have that many updates of the firmware per year, but there is at least one or two updates, and each of the updates brings improvements. And since this add-on is only active during the firmware update, you do not have to release device from this one here. You just need to start your ZigBee to MQTT with the appropriate device attached to it. And that's it. And yes, you can have both flashes installed at the same time, because they will not be running at the same time. But as I said, this can also work with the other types of firmware. For example, this is the dongle plus V2, or so-called E version of the Son of Stick. All you have to do is settings, add-ons, install the other installer or the firmware flasher, go to configuration, select the stick, I will type just to be safe this one here, we will be flashing USB device, I will leave everything as is, and here we will paste the URL for that stick. Hmm, <clears throat> this may be a bit of a problem, but thanks to Sonoff we at least know where the latest Sonoff version of the firmware is, so we can use that one there. Sonoff latest version of the firmware is located, of course, on the GitHub, and it says that Silicon Labs Ember ZNet NCP ZB coordinate firmware with the Silicon Labs standard EZSP interface. This version here is the one that you should be using if you are using ZHA integration, but it also works with OpenHub, ZigBee binding, ZigBee to MQTT, IO broker, ZigBee plugin for Domotica, and ZigBee plugin for Yedon. So we will be using this firmware here, and that's this one here. We will click on it, right click, copy link, paste the link in the Home Assistant with the extension GBL, click save, keep our fingers crossed, click on start, go to log, and we are almost done. Firmware upload progress at 100%. This is a debug or verbose mode that I've selected here. If you deselect it and save, you will not be seeing as much information here as I have it on my screen here. But now even my E version of the stick is updated with the latest version of the firmware. And that's it. I've been thinking about this add-on for Home Assistant and also the last couple of years of using Home Assistant. A lot of things have changed. For example, previously I had to use debugger to program my CC2531 stick, which was only able to capture, I think, around 25 or 30 devices or connect directly to 25 or 30 devices. And that's why this stick is no longer recommended to be used with Home Assistant, but actually it can still be used. Then we had more modern sticks where you had to press the button, plug it in a computer, release the button to allow it to enter the bootloader mode. It is a real quality of life improvement for anybody that is using either USB or network ZigBee devices attached to Home Assistant. And I really do hope that you will be using it in the future. Now you will have no reason to postpone updating your firmware on the ZigBee sticks or network devices. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video. And if you didn't know about this add-on, I really do hope that you will be using it in the future. I know that from now on I will be more careful on the latest updates to my firmware, but also I am not that type of guy that will rush and install any brand new firmware update because who knows, maybe there is a bug. If you did like this video, I would really appreciate if you would give it a thumbs up. It not just means a lot to me, and it really does mean a lot to me, each and every like. But 
it does help with the YouTube algorithms. And before I wrap up this video, I would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed or left comment on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. And last but not least, you can also do a super thanks. And if you do a super thanks, I will be, as always, super thankful for all of your support. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.